Hello and welcome back to the channel. Today's video is really about potentially one of the worst mistakes you can make as a falconer. We've just ducked into the lodge. It has just turned into an immense hailstorm. Monsoon rain, but hail instead. If you can hear any noise, it's either the hail or the rain dripping off everything. Goodness me, absolutely freezing out there. Now then, there's many mistakes you can make as a falconer and organising yourself to become a falconer. So, for instance, not having enough game or quarry for your hunting birds to chase and catch is one of the most difficult things indeed. And, and people often think, well, I've got a couple of fields. There's loads of rabbits there. I'm going to get myself a Harris Hawk to catch them. A couple of fields is not going to sustain you through a season. It might be an okay place to go for a day or two every few weeks. You need a lot of land to be a falconer, really depending on your choice of birds. Different kinds of land, but you still need a lot of land in general. More importantly than anything, a large quarry base. A couple of rabbits here and there. The odd pheasant you see that you walk up in, in the fields you have permission on, that's nowhere near enough. So for sure, that's, that's a problem. And a mistake you can make is, is buying a hunting bird, having nothing to hunt. Equally, a mistake you can make is buying a hunting bird and not having enough permission, not enough land to fly over as well. That, that's kind of those two linked together. Um, the biggest mistake you can make when starting out in falconry, or as a falconer, is not having enough time or not making enough time to keep that hawk fit and interacting with you. So for instance, we've discussed in previous videos that maybe you work nine till five, but you still wanna be a falconer. So therefore, one way to keep the hawks fit is to do exercises under floodlight in the evenings. You've got that time, will you use it? Because after a day's work, it's so tiring. In the winter, you're probably not gonna wanna go back outside in the evening best intentions soon fall away. Having enough space for your hawk is also important because if you haven't got anywhere to house it comfortably and all your kit, equipment, freezer, it's gonna, something's gonna go wrong more than likely if you're just trying to push a hawk into a space, find, find a space that isn't there because you so much want to have a bird of prey, you're gonna have one anyway. That's another mistake. Not having enough money. It's a mistake you can make. You can start with full curry and not realise to do it properly that it is going to cost you money. You don't have to be posh and have all the posh stuff, but you certainly have to have the correct stuff. That's that's housing and equipment, probably a vehicle, and your own clothing and things. You know, if you're out in the countryside all through the winter, you need kit for yourself, you need decent kit for your bird, and you need somewhere to put that bird in a in a really good, well thought out housing many mistakes you can make when getting into full career there but do you know what one of the biggest mistakes you can make encompasses all of those and i'll tell you what it is probably the biggest mistake that many falconers fall into especially especially the the newbie the novice those maybe a few months in actually the biggest mistake you can make is overburdening yourself it really is. There's a famous saying, Falk has been around a long time, a bird in the hand is worth two in the bush. I always want to chuckle at that, but think about it logically. No euphemisms intended. A bird that's so well trained, it comes to the glove when you call it, no matter what. It's way more valuable, way better, way more fun than two birds that have both flown away sitting in trees. And if you overbird yourself, that is what happens. Because most of us do not have hardly enough time to make one really good falconry bird, a really good one that's really, really driven. It's really tough to make the time. This is what happens time and time and time again. And I can hold my hand up and say, when I was young, I fell straight into this hole. People go, so here's my story. I started out in falconry with owls. A guy, a friend of mine gave me a, a trained barn owl, as anyone watching our videos knows. And it was great, I loved it. This bird was already trained, he taught me the basics. 
It was great. I thought, oh, do you know what? I love owls. They're gorgeous things, aren't they? They're all different. Oh, my God. You could collect them. I brought myself a Bengal eagle owl chick. I had two owls, but it's okay because I could fly them both. I had two. Oh, and then I thought, do you know what? I'd love a really big owl. Soon I had four owls to look after before I even got into full company proper. And it just became stressful to give them all that time. This is the classic thing that happens. And I see this all the time. A person gets a barn owl. Well, they get a Harris Hawk here in the UK. Remember, in the UK, it's all way too easy. If they get a Harris Hawk first, well, here's the classic one. They get a barn owl because they're dirt cheap. And they think, oh, I've learned how to be a falconer. They might have trained their barn owl a little bit. They've learned a lot and they're really into it. And they see people out flying or hunting with Harris Hawks. They're friends. And they, I've got to get myself a Harris Hawk. They're cheap as well. And they get a Harris Hawk. Now they've got two birds. Now, then already it becomes difficult to give that barn owl the same sort of love and attention and exercise as it was getting. Because the harrow is so much more. It requires so much more time than the, hunt, the hunting hawk, than a barn owl that maybe you can fly, maybe on a crinch line in your garden. And then someone says, oh, I've got a harrow hawk. Or they go on for sale pages, birds of prey. Harrow saw, oh, no fault of its own. Work's changed. Got to get rid of me, harrow saw. Classic scenario. A load of BS, of course, on the adverts. They all say that. And these guys say, oh, it's only 100 quid. Yeah, I'm going to get myself another harrow saw, female. And then they've got a couple of Harris Hawks and a barn owl. Now, I know 100% that some of you guys, I spoke to you, lots of you, that have done exactly that. I've been, I've been guilty of it myself. Now, if you're retired and you're devoted, maybe you can have three or four Hawks and put the time in. But the real realistic thing of it is you just can't. I've tried it. I've tried it many times since I've been older. If you've got good land with good quarry and you've got a good Hawk, you might be able to take that hawk out, maybe for an hour, have half a dozen superb flights, a catch, feed the bird up, take it back to the van and spend the rest of the day flying your other hawk and hunting it. Two is possible if you're retired or you've got exceptional land and an exceptional amount of time and you work around it. It's possible. But for most of us, the time you put into two birds of prey, if you'd have put that time into your one bird of prey, you would have had one exceptionally good bird instead of two mediocre ones. And on it goes. People end up getting a falcon because don't forget in the UK, birds of prey have become incredibly inexpensive, incredibly inexpensive. You can get falcons for a couple of hundred quid. You can get harrisorts for a couple of hundred quid. You can get owls for a couple it... People get carried away with themselves. They view online adverts. They view the Cajun Avery Bird magazine online and they browse through unintentionally they see another bird of prey and they think god I love one of those that's not very dear and they get it been there it's a massive mistake that beginners make because any top falconer will tell you put in loads of time and knowledge into one good bird is more pleasurable than having lots of birds that are mediocre stressing you out you haven't got enough housing really it can all go a bit Pete Tong for sure. But is it just the beginner that does this? Is it just the novice that overbirds themselves? No, it isn't. It's people at the other end of the scale also. People that set up birds of prey, falconry businesses, experience day businesses, falconry centres, the same thing often creeps in. Now you've got a business. Now you think, well, I need birds for this and I need a species, this species for this job. And this species for this job and you start to let your heart rule your head you think i've always wanted one of those sorry i'm just looking out the window there's a blackbird look at that sorry i've got to have a look look i was thinking is it getting worms because of the soaking we just had from the hay yes it is isn't it it's just got one i thought it was collecting mud for its nest because i've seen some nesting already it's flex it's flex he's got white feathers as part of his plumage so we know him Fletch. Is it Fletch or Flex? <laughs> flex. No, it's Flex. Fair enough. Sorry about that. It's also the professional person that gets overburdened. I see it time and time again with those. When I was running Raptor Exotics, a standalone company from Icarus Fulcury, I was regularly probably running 10, sometimes a dozen birds of prey on my team, as long as well as all the exotic animals. And now... Why was it 10 or a dozen? What was happening? Why was two kilos going? A friend of mine, Mike Hewlett, who set up Icarus Fulkery, he also breeds birds of prey. 
So very often he'd say, Dave, do you want a, a young Barbary falcon for three years? You can fly it, have it for free, and I'll have it back into my breeding po program then. Or do you want a young peregrine falcon, Dave, to fly for three years for, you, for your demonstrations and education, and then I'll have it back. So it worked well. I was getting a couple of different birds every couple of years to fly, and Mike wasn't having to feed them and train them. So getting really good, strong and fit for breeding and it worked for both of us. So that's why the numbers changed. So if you said on average 10 birds of prey on my team, now let's say three owls and one of the Harris Hawks, so there's four which were working most days in schools. So their exercise was getting taken care of straight away. But then the other birds were for different um, educational niches, peregrine falcon, that's, that's obviously got so much to talk about. And they were for outside events, falconry displays, birds of prey displays and shows. So you've got at least another six birds or seven birds that I've got to exercise every day, more or less. This is how I did it. I worked away at schools. Sometimes I'd travel. I always came home. I didn't work away, stay away, but I'd travel a long way. I'd come home exhausted, might have driven 150 miles each way. I'd set up all the exotic animals back in their enclosures, make sure they're okay. And then I'd fly every evening three or four birds. I'd fly them and exercise them, maybe a couple of falcons, a kite, bald eagle. And then the next day, I'd fly the other three or four, and I'd rotate them on a day, every other day basis. Exhausting, time consuming, mentally draining, as pleasurable as it is flying birds of prey. When you've got a lot to fly and get through, and you want to keep them fit, it is a mental drain, it's a physical drain, for, absolutely for sure. Let alone, of course, all that cleaning out. This was all done on my own, all with Georgia. Kind of be draining. But that's, they were generally hand picked birds for what I needed. I wasn't overburdened for the business. These were all picked for a slot, a job, uh, a talk, something they could offer the business, but still tiring. I see on Facebook lots of other businesses that get new birds all of the time. Now, they also get rid of birds quite a lot, which is, which is a, a thing in itself. If you're get, buying birds and getting rid of them, I've had to sell, I think, one of my birds, Daisy the Kite, through the whole of the last 12 months due to financial death. From, from the C word, well, how it's impacted our businesses here. Very difficult decision to make. Some people buy and sell birds all the time. Worst thing is I see a lot of outfits that buy a lot of second-hand birds, which is up to them, and that's a good thing. But when you're working with children and the public, for me, I don't really want anything second-hand. I want to know how they've been trained from the off. I want to trust them implicitly, for sure. But that's a whole new ballpark. So it creeps into all aspects of falconry and bird of prey keeping, that is the problem and the mistake of overburdening yourself. Because even as a professional, if you've got X amount of birds, but they're getting daily exercise and they're really settled, they go from better to better to better. If you can fly your display birds at least every other day, not just when they do their displays at weekends, you get a wow factor and a stunning team of birds of prey. As soon as you're overburdened, and those birds only get to fly at weekends at shows, they're dismal, they're boring, and they look awful to the public in what they do. There's no wow factor at all. I've seen people fly lana falcons at shows that have done three passes and gone and sat down on the grass amongst the audience, puffing and panting, evidently because they've only flown at those weekends. If you're a falcon, you really want to be flying at least five days a week to get really super fit, for sure. So the professional... Easily overburdened, ends up with a very mediocre team. The falconer, the newbie, the novice especially, within that first 12-month period, people buy a Harris Hawk, they learn a little, but they think they know a lot, and they go down that route of getting two or three birds, which is fantastic if you've genuinely got the time to make them good, but it often becomes a problem. So if you're watching this and you've got one Harris's Hawk and you're thinking of getting something else, Think long and hard, and if your Harris's hawk, let's just say Harris hawk red tail, is your hunting winter falconry bird, and you really desperately are hell bent on getting something else, don't get another falconry bird that's going to take up the time split between the two. Your falconry will suffer. Why not think about a summer falcon, a tearsel peregrine, better still, possibly a perisaker, a lana falcon, something that you can fly to allure for pleasure. For six months of summer, that can have its winter rest while your falconry birds are having are getting their winter hunting. That would be one way of splitting up and having two different birds and getting great enjoyment from them. But you're still going to have the money, the housing and so on. Please, 
the young hawk you start with will only get better if you give it lots of time and lots of years. Like a fine wine, they mature and improve with age. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Just giving you something to think about, we hope. Check out the rest of the videos. Thanks a lot. Subscribe.